Now, I'm not sure if you've ever used event emulators with a Node.js, but they're really the core of the event-driven architect. And in this video, I want to talk about the potential use cases where you can deploy this event-driven architecture, even in your project. And I'm going to explain everything that you need to know about the event emulators. Now, with that said, let's get started. All right, so before we write any line of code, I would actually suggest to understand when to use the event emitters in this case. When do you need this event-driven architecture? And since event emitters are basically the pop-up design pattern that you might probably know about, let's take a look at the example. So here we have a publisher and two subscribers. The publisher is publishing some kind of event and actually doesn't care whether it has been fulfilled or not. It doesn't care whether it has been processed. So it's out of its scope. Now, this is a very important piece of information because now the use cases might be different in this case. So let's say we have one use case where we get a request from the user and now we have a logging system and we want to log this event whether when the user actually logged in into our system. This might be important for various purposes. Maybe you want to collect or monitor these events. So if you, let's say, have one service that actually deals with a publisher, you can either make this log in a synchronous way, but then you're going to waste time and CPU of the server. What you can do instead is actually send some kind of an event, let's say to a different service, where this different service is going to pick up this event and do the logging, okay? Also, let's talk about caching. Maybe you want to cache something and you are not going to like literally insert the data into the cache in this service. You can actually simply issue an event and this subscriber is going to pick up this caching event and going to insert something into a Redis cache. So you see there are a lot of use cases. Let's say we are a ticketing manager, which is our code is going to be about. So we have a ticket management system and a customer buys a ticket. Now, whenever a customer buys a ticket, we want to create a PDF file and email it back to the user. One thing is that this is not the crucial element of our ticket system. Even if PDF creation fails, we still want to continue and serve other users. So as soon as we get a request from the user and they buy a ticket, we actually can issue an emailing event or the event that the ticket has been bought. And then the subscriber that's responsible for sending out the PDFs can pick it up and then process it at its own pace. All right, these are the basic use cases. Now, coming back to our code, there's a thing that not that many articles and YouTube videos are explaining. Now, there are two different ways of using event emitters. This is the first way where we simply create an instance of this class, say ticket manager, equals new event emitter. And there's a different way where we actually create a new class, say ticket manager, and then extend it from the event emitter class. What are the advantages and disadvantages? Well, if you want to encapsulate your logic within a class and let's say a specific domain, then you want to probably use a class instead. If you want to have a simpler solution, go with this. The second point is if you want to strictly use object-oriented programming, then of course use a class. If you want to use a functional style, go with this. If you want reus reusability, maybe creating a class where that you can reuse multiple times is a better idea. Or if you literally want to create a one event, like very generic event and forget about it, maybe go with this one. What I want to say is that you have two options and both of them are equally good. But we're going to go with the second one because I think this option where you actually create a class is a more common one. You're going to see this in the code bases more often. So what is happening here? As I mentioned, we are a ticketing system and we are able to accept a supply when the ticketing manager or ticket manager class is instantiated. And supply is basically how many tickets we have for a particular concert. And we have this buy method. This buy method basically emits this buy event. And we can call this event as we want. So you basically supply an event name, which is a string, and then as many arguments as a payload as you would like. Where does this dot emit is coming from? Well, we're extending the event emitter class. So the event emitter class has also its methods, and they are now all available to us because we're literally extending from. And emit is the basic, the probably the main method, I would say. So we have the buy event, and now this buy event has to be processed somewhere else. Now, if we look at our index.js, this is the core logic of our ticketing system. So we have a ticket manager that we already declared here, we imported here, and we instantiated with three tickets, let's say Justin Bieber's concert with only three tickets available. 
We have our emailing service that actually sends emails as we saw on our Blackboard. And we have our database service that where that actually injects or inserts the log into the database. Okay, and now we're listening to this by event. So here we're listening to it with an on method. And here we in here we are the issuing. So this emit is basically this part and on. So here this is the subscriber. Okay, as simple as that. We're listening for the by event. And as soon as the by event happens, the callback, basically this part, it's basically the same thing as in the event listeners. If you know how to use the DOM and listen for a click event and so on, it's the same structure. This is the function that we can define and it takes this arguments. And first we're gonna send an email and the way it looks like is simply this. We're going to send an email versus just a console log and we're going to save it in the database as a log and as you can see it's an insert state okay this is about this and now what we want to do is simply create a ticket okay we're going to issue the buy method or call the buy method and the buy method is going to emit buy event and here we're supplying the name of the user and the price okay this is just additional info you can also call the buy event in theory without any data now let's save this file this and open the terminal and actually run our index file. This and what we're going to see is that the event has been issued. So we're listening for the by event and we sent the email and saved it to the data. Now, as you saw already, probably we also have the, this logic where in case if we have more supply than zero, so we have tickets, we're going to call the by event. If we don't have any tickets available, we need to throw some kind of error. Well, what we're going to do is create this error object and say that there are no more tickets left to purchase. The thing is, it's good to handle this gracefully because let's say if we have three, four customers who are trying to buy kit, let's say three, four. Okay, now we are running this again. And as you're gonna see, three customers were able to buy this, but the fourth one already failed. And here it says error, there are no more tickets to left to purchase. And as you can see, our node process crashed. We don't want that. We usually want to handle our errors gracefully. So what we're gonna do is simply the following. So we're gonna copy this or we can copy this and I'm later, I'm gonna do this. And here we're gonna change it on error because this is what we are saying here, emit error. And now, as soon as we have an error, we are gonna do the smartest thing, simply say console.error gracefully handle the error. Okay, as simple as that. Now we run it again and we're gonna see that we gracefully the error, the perfect typos. All right, so this is about this. By the way, guys, if you're getting any value from this and you're enjoying this content, please click the subscribe button because it's ridiculous that 91% of the watchers of my channel are actually not subscribed. Imagine if all of those people would subscribe. If you're one of them, please do that and maybe click the like the button if you actually found this video useful. Now we're gonna go further and actually explore the event emitter in on the Node.js official website. So what we're gonna see here is that we don't only have this emit and on methods, but we have a bunch more. So we have add listener event name, so we can actually get how many events we have and their names. We can get the max listeners listener count. So we're gonna say listener count and then actually get the count of how many events we have actually listening to us. And we can also set, set max. And the other important part is actually off. So as you can see, we have on here. And what we also can do is something like this, ticket manager off. And then we say the event name, let's say by. And of course we can also put some kind of a callback here. Now you can also simply say, remove all listeners and it's going to remove all the listeners at the same time. Okay. So as you see, it's good to clean up. Maybe let's say you have a use case where the concert has ended and you don't want to sell these uh, tickets anymore, you can simply call, remove all listeners as soon as the concert has ended and all of your listeners are gone. And maybe one more thing that you need to keep in mind is that you always need to make sure that you call this by method after you have your listening to this, because let's say we remove this actually, because we don't need that. We're going to call this by before we declare our listener. And as you could imagine, it's not going to work because we, at this point, when the parser reaches this part and issues this event, we're still not listening to anything. So keep in mind that the precedence uh, does play a role. Okay, guys, if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. And I'm simply going to see you in the next video. Goodbye.